Can Open Architect is a software application designed to allow quick and easy creation of object dictionaries. It can export documentation, electronic data sheets, and source code for Can Open Nodes. This video on CanOpen Architect will look at source code generation. One of the core functionalities of CanOpen Architect is to generate source code for use in MicroCanOpen Plus, which is our CanOpen stack. It does this by converting the EDS into a set of C source files, which are primarily made up of tables. The CanOpen stack is highly optimized for performance, having been originally developed for 8-bit microcontrollers. Part of this optimization is to divide up the object dictionary into several different tables with different purposes. For example, one of the tables contains the constant entries that cannot be changed, and therefore this table can be placed into flash memory. Let's take a look at some of the settings used to control the export. Some of the communication profile entries are treated as special cases, as they are used to configure functionality in the stack. These values, for example the device type entry, end up as pound defines rather than table entries. Let's create a custom entry and see how it appears in the source code. This is a constant entry with a default value. Entry 2000 has been placed into the SDR reply entries table, which is where constant values of 4 bytes or less in length are stored. The value is hard-coded because it can't be changed. Let's see what happens if we change the entry to read-only. The entry is no longer in the constant table. It has been moved to the OD entry entries table, which means its value is now stored in the process image. The process image is a binary blob that contains all of the real-time data of the node. Offsets are used to locate a specific value. The pimage defaults macro contains the default values for the process image on reset. Here we can see the value for our entry. This same approach will be used if the entry is write only or read and write. Sometimes the access type may not match how the entry should be implemented in the firmware. The access drop-down list is also used for documentation because it is included in the electronic datasheet, or EDS, that is shared with third parties. But what if an entry that needs to be marked as constant in EDS actually needs to be in the process image? This can happen if, for example, the default value of an entry is not known at reset and needs to be read from peripheral. That means the firmware has to be able to change the entry value and it can't be hard-coded in Flash. However, the CanOpen device profile says that the entry should appear to be constant. In this case, we can override the automatic storage method using the storage drop-down list. The entry is still in the OD entry entries table and therefore uses the process image. However, when exporting the EDS, it will show as being constant. Entries that are larger than 4 bytes in size are treated differently. Let's change the type of our entry to visible string. We've created a visible string entry, the access type is read only, storage is set back to automatic, and the default value is hello world. The entry has been moved to the ODG entry entries table, which is used for larger entries. The value is located in the process image as before. One of the values stored in this table is the length of the entry, which here is 11. This is taken from the length of the default value and becomes the maximum length. If the entry is writable, or if the firmware wants to change the value, then it cannot be longer than this maximum. This could be overridden if more space needs to be allocated by entering a value into the maximum size box. Looking at the process image defaults, we can see that the default value has been padded with null bytes to the new maximum size of 20 characters. 
Sometimes it is necessary for an object dictionary entry to be implemented outside of the process image. For example, reading and writing to an external EE prompt. There is no need to waste RAM on storage if accesses to the entry can be redirected to the EE prompt. This can be achieved by setting the storage type to none. As you can see, the entry no longer appears in any tables and it has been removed from the process image. Instead, this entry will be implemented in the stack using callback functions, essentially full custom handling. Finally, let's look at the export preferences. Most of the time, the default settings are the best ones to use and should be left alone unless there is an issue. Not all of these settings apply to source code export. The source code export uses macros and the C standard does not define a maximum macro length, so it can vary between compilers. Here the maximum length can be adjusted if required. Each entry can define a minimum maximum value. The tables for these values will increase the amount of memory required to store them, so there is an option to disable the output of these tables. Note that disabling tables will stop the stack from being able to automatically check for writing values that are out of bounds. The options always create PDOs is used for cases of extreme flash memory shortage, where the SDO reply table needs to be reduced as much as possible, while still allowing PDOs to function. The option to prefix file name and macro names with the EDS name allows for a project to include more than one EDS, and then compiler settings can be used to choose which is compiled and linked. The Canopus stack does not support Boolean granularity for variables, however Boolean entries still need to be documented as Boolean in the EDS. The last option changes their storage size to a byte. I hope that this video has given you a good idea of how the code export from Canopy Architect works and how it can be customized for various use cases. For complete details, please see the Canopy Architect and Microcanopy Plus manuals. Thank you for watching.